happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Art the Meetup's boxing club. A community project created to steer at-risk youths away from drugs and crime. And who was Artemitev? A kind man, from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. Um, maybe that's what Kuno needs? A community-centric boxing club? Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? He's sort of the king around here. Uh, he's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Indeed, who is Kuno? Your guess is as good as mine. He's sort of the king around here. Oh, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling in profanities in the backyard. She looks out the window, her face reflecting back in the dark. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. How did that community project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. You should have known it. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Uh, cool, very cool about the debris, but what? Uh, but what's a snuff milieu? Uh, it's a shame about those windows, I'm not even going to ask about that milieu. Uh, let's ask the first one. It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. What does she mean, to get off on it? Electrochemistry? Calm down. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Then she lets the thought go. Uh, did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw mounts lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. Okay. But what drugs exactly? Uh, I need to know what drugs he was doing for my police report. He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Even you can probably do better than that. Thank you, Electrochemistry. I think you're right. You can almost see it. A small, sickly old man hunched behind his work desk. His pants stained with old piss, stuffing a sad, stiff-legged raccoon dog. The entire scene looks tragic. I found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activist came. Insect rights activist? What in the name of... Uh, I didn't know insects had any rights or activists. Um, let's go with the first one. Mm -hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I'm glad that someone took care of the little guys, I like insects. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. Uh, they got what they served, making clothes out of beetle wings is a terrible idea. I mean, it really is. Why would you do that? Um, I'll go with the second one, I guess? Actually, insects do have brains. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? 
Um, what's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashtkor or wherever he is. Interesting. What do these transmissions say? Uh, that's illegal, running off with company money like that. Uh, why hasn't he been arrested? Um, let's go with the second one. Sure, it's illegal, but it's not exactly anything extraordinary in business. Besides, Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. We should at least give it a shot. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant, uh, as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway as if she can still hear them uh, chit-chatting behind the curtains on a cigarette break. They seem to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Uh, from what I've seen so far, the project did look quite impressive. Really, they must have been on a gigantic ego trip. Let's go with the second one, I guess. That's what I thought. Because when the money started to run out, they just become to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep up new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult, especially if you've been drinking. Well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. Uh, that's too bad. I would have supported them. The project looked great. And you're right, they should have just tried harder. They had everything they needed uh, they had everything needed to succeed. Let's go with the first one. And so is producing something extraordinary. Her eyes wander to the shelves full of die prototypes and discarded models. Something strains her face before she looks up again. Anything else? There was a terrifying taxidermic bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed. What were the other ideas? Uh, Alright, what about the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. She leans back, disapproving. Sounds like she really didn't like those girls. Fritta does the same thing. I know a girl just like that. She works in a Fritte as a cashier and she's not particularly friendly. What did they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. I'm surprised they showed up to work at all. Uh, that's an award-winning idea. How else do you choose people around you? Uh, I don't have an opinion on employing teens. I just want to know, did it work out for the business? Let's go with the third one. Yeah, some people spend their whole lives chasing the hot one. You should have joined the gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the stand, ready to scare off customers and hit on the girls. As if they didn't already have the bear. She closes her eyes, as if remembering something painful. Uh, what about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples, like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not. 
The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishel Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. Not solemnly, it's the market doing its job. I'm sure the bear was doing its best. The bear was scary every time I saw that bear, I felt scared, like it could become alive any moment now. Um, not solemnly, it's the market doing its job. Mm, maybe, bear some money. because the taxidermist who made the bear definitely wasn't. Doing his job, I mean. How come? He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. Scary. But cool. Uh, Megatherian? What's a vision beast? Very cool. But I don't want to hear about the, uh, about bears anymore. Let's move on. A Megatherian. Megatherian. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. That's electrochemistry, I just know it. A wise and noble beast guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. I don't do drugs. I do drugs. I've got a vision beast myself. I don't have a comment on drugs. Grab your necktie and mumble, not now, you beast. That's going to be the hardest to explain. What? Do you ever feel like your vision beast is trying to blackmail uh, the fun out of you? Sure, let's ask No, that. officer. I don't have a vision beast. Normal people don't have vision beasts. Only drug adult madman like the taxidermist do. Uh, that was a hypothetical question. Of course they don't. Um, I'm a normal person and I don't have a vision beast. Uh, what about horrific neckties? Do normal people have horrific neckties? Neckties? I guess they do sometimes, officer. But I don't understand how it's relevant to our discussion. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad finishing the story. The temperature has dropped in the cover of the night. You see frost on the windows. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? Uh, I was wondering about the Welling and Rags. Is it part of the same building complex? I saw a name East Delta Pinball on the doorbell. A strange thing happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. I have a few more questions about the building. Let's start from the top. Uh, That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I was, uh, I was wondering about the Whirling in Rags, is it part of the same building complex? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the Whirling from the intercom, albeit I doubt that anyone responds. If the Whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. I saw a name, East Delta Pinball. On the doorbell. Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure. Before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Kim? Agreed. Pinball is the worst. We'll get to that. Hopefully. His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. A strange thing happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream SCA, someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Playsance from the bookstore. First, it wasn't Playsance. I know her and would have recognized her voice. Oh, right. 
But did this person say anything? She still sounds skeptical. Uh, she said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? Uh, there's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. You're right, I probably just get, uh, got made fun of. No, it was something else, something eerie. Um, it may have been some sort of rare electrical anomaly. Uh, let's go with the second one. Pranks can be eerie. She looks as if she's still convinced it's nothing to be worried about. Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. Um, other questions? Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? I think we're done here. So now it's time to uh, visit the smoker on the balcony. I think we'll do that right now. Um, okay, so that's through here. I think... Oh, right. I think we can't go out through the bookstore, right? That's prop... The door is... Wait a second. What happens if we... You know what? The bookstore is closed, it said. Wait, through here? What happens if we go there? We busted down the door. There shouldn't be any way for us to be locked out of the bookstore. Ah, come on, really? Uh, the store on the other side is closed for the night. Come back tomorrow. Ah, I wanted to uh, steal some stuff. Okay, fine, fine. If you say so, if you say so, game. Uh, let's keep going. And through the basement we go. All right, one second. Okay. Let's keep running. The body is in the fridge. Nice and cozy. Let's go out through the... Come on, through the side. Also, one thing. Uh, Call the Mamadakwa. 23 minutes. We will have that in a second. So we can we can try that uh, the, the um, corpse thing again soonish. ish is working away. 50 minutes. Okay. We'll have both of those today. We could... We could do both of those things today, then. Like, we don't really have a fixed bedtime. Um, should we just pop in and give God the money? I think he can always do that, right? But you know what? We're, we're here right now. Let's pay him for the night. There we go. We still haven't talked to the Hardy Boys. We'll do that tomorrow. Can I help you? How about my bill for tonight? Got the 20 real. Yeah, there you Good. go. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. How could anyone forget, asshole? Thank you, Half Light. Okay, goodbye. Uh, oh, and um, we're gonna put on our regular coat again, simply because I like the stats it, uh, it gives me. This has been updated. Doomed commercial area. Dice from the dice maker, sent victim, uh, victim's body to processing, map. Oh? We can do the damaged ledger logic thing again? I'll, I'll do that in a bit. I'm gonna do some reading uh, in my hotel room at night, I think. Like, we have a bunch of books and there's some, uh, some stuff with the ledger we can probably do. I'm gonna do that when, uh, you know... When we're in the room and we don't have anything else to do for the day because that stuff passes time. Uh, but the time stops at 2 a.m. So we can just read as much as we want at that point uh, at that point in time. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's fine, basically. Okay, let's go in here. And go upstairs to the balcony. Run over here. Let's talk to you. Jean Marie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking him out of drag from his cigarette. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. Uh, we got your hint. Found the key right under that stone. Beautiful. He replies, smiling, as he looks at you. Something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? 
That's what I'm aiming for, yes. Uh, honestly, I'm just trying not to screw anything up. I'm not just going to make things just right, I'm going to make them spectacular. Ignore the question. I was hoping to talk to a possible witness. Your balcony overlooks the murder scene. I don't know if that's going to give us uh, super star cop points, but I'm just going to go uh, with that anyways. Beautiful. He says again, a nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Uh, is it Friday tonight? It feels like Friday. Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Even the rain feels nice. He leans over the railing and sticks out his hand to feel the rain. Um, why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me, you do. Uh, very well, I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up, one by one. Besides, I've got to run. He's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Uh, run where? But I just found you again. Go if you must, I don't care. I don't care about people leaving me all the time. Don't worry, we'll meet again. Come find me in the bar of the Whirling some evening. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club. Music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly, and as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. Only if you promise that we'll talk again, it's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Take care, alright? Okay. There we go. Uh, he says with another disarming smile before slipping off into the night. There was something different about him uh, that I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? His shirt. The lieutenant squints his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. His shirt. His shirt. His shirt. No, I don't know why his shirt is always unbuttoned. His mouth tightens as though trying to hold something back. Come on, detective, let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. Okay, let's go inside. I'm gonna quickly give it a save. Let's take a look around first. A quarterly business magazine. Sounds exciting. Dish, uh, dishes uh, soaked up in a pot. An empty ashtray. Flyers for underground parties. An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. A Samaran conical hat. Let's pick that up. Uh, what's this? Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers. An old photo of the same apartment, dated year 01. The party dragon's silk robe. And other than that, I don't think there is anything. So let's quickly take a look at our items that we just got. Uh, Samaran conical hat, plus one logic, super logical for a cop to wear this. Minus one suggestion, insensitive bachelor party vibes. This tawny cone-shaped uh, cone hat looks like a beacon of Samaran wisdom. It's straws sticking up like antennas. Uh, thank God you really can't see people's reactions when they see you strolling around in this incredibly insensitive headpiece. And the uh, party dragon silk robe. Plus one drama, become the dragon. Plus one electrochemistry, become an addict in a strange bathing robe. This sleazy silky bathing robe is vi uh, in vibrant blues, features a roaring dragon on its front, ready to take off into the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from Sale. Real Saleites probably don't care. Okay, let's take a look at this. Interview the Sunday friend, of course. We will do that. Uh, we've got another point. Okay, we'll see what we do with those points. Do we have, do we have any, new for, uh, any new thoughts that we want? White morning. 
We could do white morning um, anti-object task force. You know what? Anti-object task force sounds good, maybe. We could try that. I don't remember what it does, but uh, we can internalize it. Do I want to do the 15th in the tribe as well? We can always forget thoughts if we want to, and I'm willing to get rid of some of them eventually. Um, but uh, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. 15th in the tribe. Let's go for those. Wasteland of reality is not something I'm going to do here. That's becoming sober, and that's not what this version of Harry Dubois would do. White morning is uh, fine, I think. I, I don't really need to do that. If we don't find anything else to fill out that slot, I might equip uh, White Morning, but we might find some other more fitting stuff. 